Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight I'm going to, to show you how to convert a flux into a list. Um, and the reason why I want to show you this is because when we are new to reactive web or if we want to test our flux, then usually we would like to block our flux and then actually extract the data from inside the flux because a flux is just a promise that data will appear some uh, at, at some point in time. And then uh, a list is actually something that actually contains data. So it, it, it uh, can be quite difficult to understand this concept. And um, also for testing purposes, then, uh, then it would be nice if you could just convert the flux into a list. I'll show you how to do that uh, tonight. So let us uh, let us say that we have this reactive web application right here. And I've created this by pressing File, New, Project, and Spring Initializer. And I'm using uh, JDK 11. And then I chose Gradle Project like this. And I chose uh, Java 11. I gave it a good group name, of course, and then press Next. And then I checked off Lombok. And then I checked off Web Reactive Web, uh, Spring Reactive Web, as we have right here. Next and finish. And then I ended up with this project that I have right here. Let us create a REST controller. This could be a situation, right? We have this cool REST controller. Uh, ship, uh, spaceship REST controller. Let us create that. Spaceship REST controller. So now we have a spaceship rest controller right here. I'll annotate it with rest controller. I'll create a method that can give us some ship spaceship names. Yeah. So get mapping, get mapping, and we're not go we're not we're not going to uh, to access it through the API, but uh, I'm just giving it something uh, so it looks like a real uh, life example spaceship, and then uh, maybe names. Then we have a public flux string. Just to keep it simple, let us play with strings uh, tonight. Of course, this will work with any kind of data that you actually have. So, um, spaceship names like this. And then we return a flux. And when we want to create a flux manually, then we use the just method. If we usually would have our flux from a third party uh, service or maybe from file uh, from a file or maybe from a database from a local database and if you if you if the database doesn't if it doesn't have a reactive uh, library then you can access it uh, by using the uh, yeah, by getting a stream back if you're using jpa then you can say uh, query and then dot uh, get the result as a stream and then the stream can be converted easily to a flux by using from stream like this so um, there's no excuse for not uh, for not making your application reactive and for not returning a flux any longer, because if you can if you can uh, get a, a stream, then you can also uh, convert this into a flux very easily. But right now I'm, we are just doing this with manual uh, pieces of data. That means I'll just use just, and then we'll add some spaceship names right here around. Uh, maybe we have, we have a blue spaceship. Maybe we have a cube. Maybe we have a pyramid. Pyramid shapes. Spaceship, maybe we have a huge one, a spaceship, maybe we have a, what what kind of a, a, a spaceship should we have, maybe we can have a red spaceship, <coughs> can also maybe have a pointy spaceship, so now we have a lot of spaceships right here. We're going to simulate that this takes a little bit of time by adding a delay per element, so element, delay per element right here, and I'm going to set this to uh, some millis, let's say 500 millis, means half a second per between each element. Uh, this was the wrong, yeah, this was the wrong duration. I always get the wrong duration. It needs to be Java of time there, then of millis like this. Now I got the right duration. So that means that the, then we have a cool, now we have a cool rest controller that returns this, uh, this flux right here. Let us create a test for this. So this is our situation. We want to create a test. I'll insert and let uh, IntelliJ create a test for us. Yes, genuine five, tick off the method. Thank you very much, IntelliJ, for helping us with all this boiler upload. Play the uh, code right here. Another thing, uh, Spring Boots, uh, or IntelliJ, it should have made this public because it needs to be public. This needs to be public for, for the test to run and be, to be found um, correctly. Um, so uh, another thing we need to do, we need to auto wire. Auto wire. I think that could be another cool thing if IntelliJ could actually see that this is a Spring Boot test that we are that we are trying to create, and then auto wire the spaceship rest controller like this. Um, let me know if you agree or not in the comments. Um, then we have the spaceship names right there, and then I'll extract the name, the flux, 
And when we're new to this, then we don't know what is this flux. It's just a, something weird. I don't want a flux when I'm testing, right? I want a list instead. Wow, this is really, really annoying. Um, you could be tempted to get the data in a wrong way, and I'll show you how to uh, how to to, uh, to to get it in the wrong way. And that would be uh, first of all, you could you could try to subscribe and then sleep and then see what happens and see if you could actually get the data. Another way you could be tempted to do was to to use do on next, do next on next, and then you can actually get the value right here. And maybe we would add it to a, a maybe we'll add this to a string, right? Uh, to a list. Sorry, then you would add each, each element to a list if that's what, if that's what we wanted to to do. And then we could say block last like this, and then we would actually have the the, the last element uh, like this. Block last that means that uh, do not run this uh, asynchronous at all. Um, just give us the uh, yeah block at the last uh, and the last element and until the last element has been retrieved and the last element will then be set to this uh, to this variable or local variable over here right so this is also a way and it actually works we can I can, I can let's try to run and see what happens actually um, but this is not the uh, it's not best practice I'll show you the best practice uh, you could actually do this I would say so to test but um, there is an, an easier way, even an easier way. Let's just oh here look here we get them here five milliseconds apart then we got the uh, we got the spaceships right there and then when we were, when we were done with the last uh, element then we uh, quit the test uh, if you want to we could also just um, if you don't take my word for it then I can say last element like this and then we can print out the last element right here because that is block last that is what that does it's uh, blocks until the last element and yeah sets it right there. <coughs> But as I also mentioned, then you you, you ruin all the asyn all the asynchronous uh, parts. So this is synchronous instead. Um, so let us just wait. We'll see what happens now. Half a second apart again, and I would also like to see the last element, last element pointy. So I can see now we actually got that twice there. Um, but this is not how I, I, this is not that's an easy way. So because this all the fluxes actually has a collect. So we can actually collect, and then we can say collect lists. Then we get a mono returned. So a mono return that is uh, the actually the same as a flux. It's a promise, but uh, there will only be one piece of data in the mono. So that means that we can actually collect the list. Then we will have a mono. I'll just delete this just so we can see what we're getting. I'll take one step at a time right here. So now we collect it as a list. So now we have a mono. Mono with a list inside. And then on the mono, I can call block if that's what I want to. And in, then that means that now I'll actually get my list, the list that I actually wanted. And then I can uh, then I can just loop over each element. String, string lists. And then I could uh, yeah, then I could system out or test uh, those uh, the, those base shapes. Maybe I want to test the length or something on, on them. Right uh, right now, I'll just print them out. Um, from mono list and then each element str like this and then I delete this line with control Y if you're using Intel here. Let us try to run this program again again again. Look look how beautiful it is. We have the flux collect list. Then we get a mono instead. We get this mono right here which has a generic type of list with a generic type of string and that's just because we're playing with string tonight. Usually you would have an object here of course instead. Then we get the list of our strings, and that could also be like spaceships if that's what we want to play with instead. And we get that by running mono.block, and here we also ruin the whole the whole asynchronous thing. We actually we wait in this point in code for um, yeah for the mono to be done and to for the data to actually to to, to be there. Um, and then we go through each element of the list. I hope this is understandable. If it's not, uh, if you don't understand, feel free to write in the comments. Um, there are not, there are no, uh, there are no stupid uh, questions, only stupid answers, of course. And all of your questions, of course, are also good at um, helping me to to know what I should make more videos about. Um, let us run this test right now. <clears throat> Here it is, and now you can actually see. Now we 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 actually we collected all the data, and then we were done collecting the data. Then we had the list 
had uh, right away, and then we, then we just uh, printed out the, the whole list. You can actually see that we, we did not get the, uh, yeah, we were not, uh, the, 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 the data was not ticking out like it was just before. <clears throat> so this is exactly how you, should, uh, you can convert a flux to a list. I'll upload the code as usual. And thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again very soon. Bye-bye.